Hello everyone, welcome to the next session of ANSYS APDL. I am solving stress analysis of a 4 noded CST element. I have solved this numerical using FA analysis in the previous session. Please go through the numerical because I will be comparing the solution obtained by ANSYS APDL with a solution obtained with FA method which will help me understand if the solution obtained in the previous session is correct or not. So let's get started. Looking at the diagram, I am going to preferences, structural, OK, post processor, element type, add, edit or delete, add. I will go to solid, quad 4, node 182, OK, options, I will change element behavior from plane stress to plane stress with thickness, OK. I am choosing this option because in my question the element is given with the thickness value. I will close. This element type option is done. Next I will go to real constants. Add, edit or delete. I will add type 1 plane 182. OK. I will give the value of thickness as 10 mm which is given to me in the question. OK. And close. After this I will go to material properties. I will go to material models, structural, linear, elastic, isotropic. This is what I choose. Young's modulus is given to me as 2 into 10 raised to 5. So 2 E5. And the Poisson's ratio value is given to me as 0 0.25. Okay. This is done. Next, I will go to modeling, create, key points. This is about adding the nodes to the APDL solution. So in active CS, my first key point, if you look at the diagram, I have my apply. My second node is at 7550, apply. Third node is at 0, 050, apply. And the fourth one is at 0, 0. Now this is the way I have used for numbering in the FEA solution. So I am using the same one over here. I am not going to change anything. So these are the four nodes. This is done. Key point work is done. I will go to area, arbitrary, through KPS. I will choose my nodes based on the element and the covering nodes. And I am going to refer my solution of FEA. So in that solution, I took my element 1 between 1, 2 and 4 nodes. This is done. Okay. My element 2 was between node 3, 4 and 2 in this order. So please make sure that you do not change the order of numbering. It may change your solution. This is done. Next, I'll go to meshing, mesh tool. I'll go to global set. The number of element division is 1. OK. I'll choose the shape of the mesh as triangular. You can choose it as quadrilateral. That's your choice. I'll go to mesh. I'll choose both the areas one by one just by using the left click of my mouse. OK. And close. Now meshing is done. Here my preprocessor work ends. Next I will go to solution. In this I am going to define loads. Okay, I am going to apply structural displacement. So I will first apply the displacements which are possible on this body. And then I will go for applying of my forces. So we are basically going to mark the displacement possible or constraints. So if you look at the diagram. I will start with my node 1. So I will go nodes node 1 here I can see there is a roller now roller means the body is constrained to move in the y direction so it cannot move which means my y axis value will be 0 so in FEA solution I had taken v1 value as 0 so I write here ok u y I write 0 ok next if you see on node 3 it is fixed 
So I write ux and uy both are 0, okay. On node 4, okay, again ux, uy are 0 because node 4 is also fixed. This completes my displacement values. Next, I'll go to force or moment on nodes. I'll go to my first node. At this node, there's a roller. The point is constrained to move in y direction, but it can freely move in the x axis. So I'll click on this node. Okay. Fx, which is a reaction force, will be 0, which means it is free to move. And okay again. Next on node, I'll go to node 2. You can see in the diagram at this point, fx value is 0. And at this point again, the fy value is given to me as 5000 newton in the downward direction. So I'll write here minus 5000 newton. Okay. So this completes all of my boundary conditions. This ends here. I'll go to solve current ls okay yes solution is done Just close and cancel out this dialog box my solution ends here next i'll go to general post processing which will give me my solutions so i'll go to plot results contour plot nodal solution dof solution i want to see individually my displacement values so it will be easier for me to you know, compare so I'll go to X component of displacement. Okay. Here you can see the value is 0 0.715 into 10 raised to minus 3. This is an mm. And I obtain the value as 7.147 into 10 raised to minus 5 centimeter by a few solutions. So it is very, very close. Next I'll go to nodal solution. And I want to see my Y component of displacement. Okay. Here I get minus 0 0.002781 and by FPA solution I got minus 2.78 into 10 raised to minus 4 centimeter. The solution of APDL is in mm. Please mark. So they are very close and my solution is correct of FEA. Now here I can go to plot control style, size and shape. I can just display of element. I can put it to on. Okay. I'll go to my isometric view so I can see my elemental displacements here. Next, I'll go to my element solution. I'll go to stress. This is very important. X component of stress. Okay. I see the value that I obtained here is minus 0.931 Newton per mm square. And by FEA, I obtained it as minus 94.9. 49 Newton per centimeter square. So it's very, very close. Next, we'll go for Y element. Okay. This is minus 11.3559 Newton per mm square. And by FEA solution, I obtain as minus 1133.53 Newton per centimeter square. Again, very close. And last, I would like to see my shear stress value as well. Here I get minus 0 0.62 Newton per mm square and by FA I got as minus 61.98 Newton per centimeter square. So you can see my solution is very close and it is correct. So with this I end the session. I hope you have understood how you are supposed to solve by FA method and then compare by using APDL solution to know the correctness of your solution by FA method. See you in the next session. Thank you.